Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Before we begin, I want to turn your attention to recent events and that is the brutal murder of George Floyd by the police and, and as a consequence, the Black Lives matter movement really needs everyone's help on the internet and so i'm going to leave a link to a website below with a bunch of petitions and places that you can donate as well as some educational resources i'm also going to be linking to a playlist that myona from myona reads has created that has a bunch of black booktubers in the booktube community that you can subscribe to and watch their videos i really highly recommend going through that list and subscribing and supporting and uplifting the black voices in our community with that being said this is a june tbr and this is a perfect segue into the first book that i will be reading in the month of june and that is for the blackout buddy read hosted by books with jay and this is a really great time especially with everything that's going on on, on a day-to-day -day basis that we're seeing all over the internet all over the news i just think we really have as readers a lot of resources at our fingertips and then maybe we're underutilizing them i know that i don't read as much nonfiction as maybe i should and i think that words are really powerful and they really have the ability to change our perspective and for us to learn and educate ourselves and in life we should never stop trying to learn more and so because of that i'm really excited to join the blackout buddy read and to educate myself more on the topics of white privilege and racism because i think it's really really important and it's definitely something even though i've been reading about it on twitter and trying to educate myself as much as i can i think an academic dissertation type book will be just like another level of information that I'm excited to get because I haven't gotten that sort of academic perspective on it yet so far. Um, just more so the internet, which is a great resource and I feel like I learned a lot of things just scrolling through my Twitter and seeing these things that people are posting and yeah, so I'm excited to read it and so that book is called White Rage, The Unspoken Truth of Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson. This book explores from the Civil War era to our current day and it's written by a cl an acclaimed historian and it reframes our continuing conversation about race chronicling the powerful forces to black progress in america and i think this is really important because like as they say history is written by the winners and i think that our education system is probably very biased in the way that we learn history we learn slavery and all of these different things that happen and have happened in the united states as much as maybe we have learned in school like there's definitely so much more that we haven't listened haven't learned yet and also just like having gotten perspective of reading it from like a black voice and a black academic voice and seeing it in a different perspective so i'm really really intrigued by this because i always did enjoy u.s history in school and i don't know i'm kind of excited to be like diving into a non-fiction book in a genre that I don't typically like I don't even typically read non-fiction and if I were to read non-fiction I'd usually reach for science but this time I'm reaching for a racism and history book so I'm really excited for something new and so basically in the summary of this book it is talking about the term white rage differentiates as like it is after the events of Ferguson in August 2014 um, the media referred to uh, angry response of African Americans as black rage and Carol Anderson is now reframing this as white rage at work which is actually the response of white people to black people as African Americans have made advances towards full participation in our democracy. And it's going to cover a bunch of topics from the end of Civil War, Reconstruction Era, Black Codes, Jim Crow, Supreme Court, 1954, Brown versus Board of Education, Civil Rights Act of 1964, Voting Rights Act of 1965, uh, Southern Strategy, War on Drugs, and all of that. So yeah, really, I'm really excited about this one. And I have this one on my Kindle so that I could get it right away. Okay, and with that being said, I'm still going with my strategy of putting less books on my TBR per month. So I'm going to be reading four full length novels and then I'm just I just have one comic so my strategy i've been putting four novels and then like two comics on there but since like one is going to be a non-fiction so it'll be four novels and one non-fiction one comic okay so i think where i want to start this month is the merciful crow by margaret owen and it's actually a reread for me so i 
really want to start rereading books more often. I feel like I have these huge shelves of books with stories that I love and I buy them and I keep them because I love them so much. And so I really want to purposefully reread books more and I feel like sometimes I get in this mindset of I'm overwhelmed by new releases that I feel like I don't have time to reread books. But I remember as a kid, like I wasn't buying like 10 million books a month. Like I was reading a book and then rereading books over and over. And so that's something that I really want to reincorporate back into my life. I read The Merciful Crow for the first time last July and I got it at an ARC at BookCon and I was so excited. It was like one of the first ever ARCs I've ever gotten in my life. And I really enjoyed the story. I gave it five stars. I feel like once it hit shelves, people on booktube have mixed opinions, but you know what? I really loved it and I'm really excited to re-experience this story. And then I will be moving on to the sequel, The Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen. Well, obviously I have the same author. And this one I got as an arc from Henry Holt. So thank you so much to Henry Holt for sending this my way. I'm so excited to have a review copy and to read it before it comes out and so that is kind of my motivation for rereading the first one and then going straight into the second one. I do also want to mention that it, June is Pride Month and one of the characters in this book is Pam and so I think that's really great and again just trying to make a conscious effort not just this month but in many months throughout the year to be reading diversely. Okay so what is The Merciful Crow actually about? Phi is the future ruler of a shunned cast of mercy killers. In this world, there are different castes, and depending on the cast is like what your power is. She relies on bone magic drawn from teeth to protect her band, and basically the crows are shunned by society, and they are really nomads on the go just trying to survive, um, but they're needed for this plague that is taking over the kingdom and when people and when a village is infected by a plague because the crows can't get the plague they come in and they kill the people that have this plague. When Fi discovers that the crown prince Jasmir and his trusty body bodyguard Tavin have faked their deaths to escape the queen's wrath she is ready to turn them in and cut her losses but Jazz offers Fi a deal that she cannot refuse. Make sure she lives to see the throne and he will see the crows rewarded. And to outrun and out with the queen, they form an uneasy alliance and set off on a journey to escape Queen Rosanna's deadly trackers. I really love this book when I read it and I think it did a really good job of examining class structure. It really made me think, which I really enjoy when fantasies connect to real life issues. And I think it could be a really good lens in which to explore those issues. So yes, really excited to reread this one. I think I'm actually gonna start it today because I just like, I'm in the mood for it, you know? And then of course we have the sequel and this one, the tagline is kings become outcasts and lovers become foes in the thrilling sequel to Margaret Owen's The Merciful Crow. And since it's a sequel, that's all I'm gonna say, but I'm so excited. The next book on my list is The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Hennen, and she is the author of The Sea Witch. This one comes out on July 7th, and I was sent an arc by the publisher, so thank you so much to Tortine for sending a copy my way for review. And this is actually based off of The Princess Bride, which I absolutely adore that movie. I actually haven't read the book, but the tagline is, What if Buttercup saved Wesley? So when her father dies, Princess Amrande is given an ultimatum marry the leader of a neighboring kingdom, or lose her crown and possibly her life. And to force her hand, her beloved, the stable boy Luca, is kidnapped. Amrande was raised to be a warrior, not a sacrifice. And so nothing will stop her from saving her true love. I'm really excited to see the damsel in distress trope flipped on its head. I think it can be really fun. And of course, the princess bride is just full of like wit and fun times. And so I'm really, really hoping that we get some of that in this book. And... Of course, I will let you know my thoughts after I read it because I will be putting up a review hopefully before it is released. And the last novel that I have on my TBR this month is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Ariyemi. I just feel like it's time for me to read this book. Like many, many books on my bookshelf, I've had it, I've had it on my shelf for far too long. I actually got it at BookCon in 2018 and I just haven't picked it up yet, but I, I don't know, something about this book, maybe because I got it at BookCon, makes me want to read it in the summer. And it is Avatar The Last Airbender inspired, and I do have the sequel, so maybe I would read that in July. And yes, I just feel like it's time. So this is a West African inspired fantasy, and we follow Zelly, and she is 
on a mission to avenge her people because there used to be magic in the soil of the Orisha and under the rules of a ruthless king, the magic was burned from the land. Zeli has one chance to bring back magic and strike against the monarchy and with the help of a rogue princess, Zeli must outwit and outrun a crown prince who is hellbent on eradicating magic for good. I mean, it's just, it's time to pick up this book. I've only seen good things about it. Everyone seems to love it. Avatar The Last Band Airbender inspired. It's just, it's time. And I'm really, really excited to get to it. And those are my four novels for the month of June. And then the last thing that I'm going to try and pick up is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. And this is a sweet little comic about boy meets boy, boy become boys become friends, boys fall in love, and this is about soft, shy and soft-hearted Charlie Spring and rugby player Nick Nelson, and it's about their friendship that slowly blooms into something more, and I've just heard such great things about these comics. It's so cute, and it's perfect for Pride Month, and I love it. I'm, it's actually interesting because this has been out for a while, but I guess like the American publisher is publishing it now, so it's actually an uncorrected proof. So I'm um, maybe, I think this was maybe published first in Australia, and now it was like acquired in, by an American publisher, so this is published by Scholastic. So yeah, I'm not sure why I got an ARC at ALA when it was already out, but I have it and I'm excited to read it, and I think it's just gonna be the most heartwarming, cute little story. So with that being said, thank you for watching my June TBR. Please make sure to check out the information that I've linked in the description. It's really, really important. And with that being said, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.